Hi, good day. This is Mr. Orvin and we are in our IC3 Module A Computing Fundamentals series of lessons. This is lesson number four and we are going to discuss file management. So I will start by sharing our screen. Okay. So this is our PowerPoint presentation. It is uploaded on your Moodle also, and you can download it so that you can be guided while I discuss this. So what are we going to discuss? Uh, navigate a directory and follow paths. Understand rights and permission. Use a file explorer. Work with Windows. Recognize different types of files. Work with files and folders. Find files, work with recycled bin, describe default file locations, share pictures on a smartphone, manage electronic media, share files with other users, zip and unzip files. Okay, let's start by understanding folders and directory structures. So what's the directory? Uh, directory and folders are the same. If you are using Mac, you probably might be having the term directory or you might be using directory because this directory is the first um, name of this. Before there was Windows, uh, the DOS or the disk operating system, the Unix, okay, were in, I mentioned before in our operating system topic that uh, Mac was um, developed, okay? Uh, Mac OS were developed or was developed using Unix. So all of them, they use directory. Now came in Windows, then it was now termed as or named as folder. Okay. Uh, computer store files in an organized manner, of course. Okay. Uh, it has to be otherwise, and it's a computer. Okay. It's, it's based on logic. It cannot just have, uh, uh, you know, uh, mix and matches of ideas and so on. It cannot be like that. It cannot be like a human being. Like uh, it, I, it's either uh, a human being is organized or not. Okay. Sometimes a person's just throwing his things in his room or in her room, and, and uh, later on, if he wants to find it, he still needs to look for it. Um, computer does not do that. Okay. It has to put it in a certain location and he knows how to find it. If he cannot find it, then that's it. He really cannot find it. Okay, this makes it easy for the operating system and the user to find files. The structure of a file directory is hierarchical. So a file directory is hierarchical. It has a root, okay? So we, we have another term, root. There is a, a main folder, then you have subfolder, then you can put again another subfolder, subfolders of sub, 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 subfolders, and so on and so forth. Okay, it has no end. It's in uh, infinite. Let's proceed. Now, directories or folders will start in a root folder, and it is drive letters. Drive C is our main drive. Main drive meaning it's either uh, mostly located on your hard disk. It's not the entire disk because there is a drive where you put on put your operating system, which is your drive C folder, and there is a partition of that. You mean that the, the virtually you are when you say virtually via the operating system, he's dividing your hard disk okay into different drives or directory. You have only your root drive or your working drive, which is your hard drive C. Now, why is it starting with C? Let's proceed with that. When you write a designation for a drive letter, you follow the letter with a column, okay? A C should always be followed by a column. I will show that to you using a command prompt, and I've shown this before, okay? You can see it here. It's always followed by a column. C is your hard, not hard, but now this is virtual root directory and it will be followed by column. The next subdirectory is going to be noted by a slash, backslash. Slash is like this. This is 
called backslash. Okay, I'm going to minimize this and proceed. Now, this is what we are talking about. If you open your file explorer, how do you open your file explorer? Uh, anyway, we'll discuss that later, but starting from here, you can click the start window. You have a file explorer. You can right click. Uh, yeah, you can have a file explorer also, here. but if you just click, mostly by default, it's going to be here. And when you open that, you have a left pane. When you say this is division, it's called pane, P-A-N-E. Okay, you have drive C, X, Y. Okay, so our PC has this, and it has a root directory, drive C. Uh, main drive, because our operating system and our FAS, our desktop is in here. Okay, your user files and folders are here. Okay, let's go to the illustration. As you can see here, it starts with C, D, E, F, and so on. Okay, as many drives that you can have a partition on your hard disk. You can also put that uh, in the server, for example, what you can see here in the explorer, drive X, X colon. This is now is, this one is drive Y. Okay, so you can see this. Okay, X and then Y folder. Okay, so this is a, a server folder that we as staff are putting some files and folders also here. Let me try if I can open. Yes, I can open. Okay, so although it says before it's offline, the X here means offline. Now it is online when I click it. Okay, so anyway, that's a, uh, the, the, how do you call the naming or Yes, the notification, no, no, what I'm saying is, uh, yeah, the naming of the drive, is starts with C, okay, I was, I was uh, mentioning this, why it started with C, because the older computers started with A, with a flappy disk, okay, a flappy, as I told you, that's the drive A, okay, and uh, when it was developed, again, there will be a CD, Okay, and they use the CD, okay, as the drive. I don't know, it's the drive D already. No, but that's where it started. A flappy A flappy B. So there are two flappy disk, okay, that you can insert your flappy disk, okay. Uh, then when you start your computer, it will start with A, and then, then if there's nothing in A, it will go to B, okay. Uh, so that's how the uh, the computer knows how to boot the computer, okay, the operating system or the whole system. Starts with A and B, but that was already reserved before with the floppy. Now we remove floppy, then we have the hard disk. That's why C, it always starts with C now, okay, because of the hard disk. Who knows later on, we do not have a hard disk. There is already a te uh, not a technology, but a reviving technology. Uh, I mean, it's not new. We have the this class computer. When you say this class, you just bring your computer, okay? You connect to a network. It's connected via cable. When you start that, there's no hard disk on your computer. It's in another area in your uh, office, in your company. That's why you only bring a monitor. So anyway, let's proceed. Okay, now not only that, but you can smart uh, you can connect smart devices or smart, uh, not, yeah, devices, uh, camera, okay, external camera um, that has a memory, okay, storage devices, and that will add, so for example, I use, uh, I inserted a USB flash drive, when I go to the file explorer, it will be added here, like uh, D or E or F, whatever. Okay, so how many devices you will insert, it has. Now, as you can see here also, it doesn't, it, that if you connect, for example, your smartphone, it might have that you have an SD card, your smartphone, usually the, the Samsung, the Huawei, okay? Uh, unlike uh, the iPhone, the iPhone has only the storage device, internal storage, so that's it. Okay, now, 
file folders, file and folder permissions can either be read or write. Basic permission are rules that determine whether you can access a file and what you can do with it. Basic files and folders in your computer, you can read or you can read and write. It's always that you can read, okay? You can view the names of files and folders of the network, view the contents of files and execute application programming of files. You can read means uh, basically you can open it, okay? Write is where if you can edit it. So a file or a folder, okay? You can read most likely or most of the time you can read, meaning you can open, you can see it, uh, and you can execute, meaning you can uh, yeah, open the file, okay? But there are times that you cannot write, meaning you cannot edit. Those are the permissions, basic permissions. Okay, now using a file explorer, I have shown you already what do you mean by file explorer and that's it. Uh, it's a launcher, okay? So you launch your folder, basically it is now a folder. Where are you? You just need to see the path. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. What are in here? Okay, you can see that a file explorer also has an address bar. This means that it will start with this PC, meaning the hard disk. Okay, this PC has drive C, X, and so on and so forth. Okay, you go there. If you want to go inside drive C, that's the one you're going to click this. You want to go to the users and so on, okay? Or vendor destalilia. Now I'm going to go to my desktop, and this is how the complete path. If you click here, uh, he will give you a C colon users path, okay? So to your desktop folder, to my desktop folder. Okay, so you have the different uh, part of the file explorer. Uh, you have Expand, minimize, ribbon buttons, control buttons, close, maximize, minimize, refresh, address bar, quick access toolbar. So you have it here. Okay. Uh, control menu. Is it this one? Yes. Uh, status bar. Let me just highlight this. 33 items. That's the status bar, one item selected. So navigation buttons are here. Uh, go back, forward. Uh, this is go back directory. I mean, go back to the uh, folder. This one is go back to the uh, window, okay? The last window, okay? Uh, this one is go back up to the uh, root direct, not the root, I mean the, the directory that it came from. Uh, for example, I go to the desktop. If you want to go back to Orven, Studio, this is where you're going to click. But if you're talking about Windows, I went here. Okay, you want to go back there. You have to click this. If you click this, it will not go back to that previous window. Okay, so I click this one. That's what we call go back to that previous window. Anyway, you have the search box inside the file explorer. It's very important also, most likely very useful. And then you have your contents pane. Okay, now there are icons for files and for folders, and there are icons for shortcuts. So if you have an arrow, it's a shortcut. So again, if you found out that what you copied is a shortcut with this arrow, it has no meaning. For example, you want to transfer a file or a folder to your USB, but accidentally you have copied only this, copy and paste on to your USB, it has no meaning. You can see that even if you click the properties of this files and folders, it's just one kilobyte, a small file, because it's just a shortcut, okay? So some of the people accidentally will just copy and paste this, and it has no meaning, okay? It has no value except it will give you a shortcut when it is on uh, the operating system. But if it is in the USB, the location of this, okay, the path, when you say path, the one we were discussing earlier, okay, this one is 
copied on that file, on that shortcut, and if it is transferred to another computer, it will not work, okay? Okay, working with files and folder, generally a file or folder options will be looking like this. So you have, let's see an example. So any, right click any folder properties, uh, no, it's gonna be on the folder itself. Okay, uh, here, it should be an options. Yeah, okay, here. So when you click file options, this is where other options is. Okay. So, so when you change those options from file options, it will change everything. Like for example, I want to single click to open an item. I don't want double click, so you will have that, okay? If you want to open search folder in its own window, you don't want in the same window, okay? You can do that also. For example, if I click this, that means if I double click on any of this folder, okay, what will happen is it will open a new window, okay? So, but I don't want that. I want to stay in the same window. View view hidden files view anything okay whatever you want to do it's in here okay display file icon on thumbnails displays the file size information in folder tips and so on so this is the default that i didn't change before uh except the show hidden files and folders so you can do that in the view hidden items okay sharing options are here Okay, this is the home of your file explorer. Let's proceed. Okay, working with files and folder, these are the different views, okay, of your file explorer. You can have extra large, large, medium, details, content. Uh, so details, if you want to see what is the file type, what is the, yeah, when it was last modified, okay, and what type. Uh, yeah, file type, size, you can also hear. Uh, what's the difference of the small and the list? There's not much. Uh, I think the small is, it will give you by column already. The list, it will give you first a whole one column before it goes to the next two column. I think that's just the difference. We can try that. Uh, how do you click? on the small icons, yeah, here, in the view, it's a large, small tiles, large list, small, okay, you can see that it will divide into three columns already, and like this, it will go here, first column before it will put you here, okay, in the second column, okay? And then you have details. Uh, most likely I'm, I'm comfortable with details, it's gonna be easier for me to identify the files and the folders already, and that's it, okay? Not useful, not useful for me. Okay, so I'll go with the details, and that's it. Uh, yeah, proceeding. Understanding file types and file name extensions. A file name extension is a suffix, meaning at the end, that xlsx that tptx okay added to the base name of a computer file with that uh that extension name is very important in a file name uh what we call a structure okay uh because the computer only identifies your file or it opens the correct applications where you have to launch your file for example that uh, docx docx without that, that file name extension your computer your operating system will not know what to open what explore that's why sometimes if he doesn't rec recognize that those uh, file name extension he will ask you uh, it cannot, it's not recognizable what application do you want to use. 
Okay, so for easy opening of the file, it has to have the correct file name extension. So all files has to have um, file name extension. Uh, let's see that. Right now you can see, for example, configuration steps that txt, that txt, if it is an Excel, let's see the full name, that XLSX. Okay, if you, you can hide this extension name, but in formally, it, uh, my, our files has a uh, extension name. Now, how about a folder? Does it has an extension name? It does not have, okay? It does not have the dot txtx, but it has a mark. I've shown you already here in the D uh, command prompt, all of this is marked as dir. It does not have a file name extension, as you can see here, nothing, okay? but it has a mark as dir. That means it is a folder. So meaning if I double click on this, it will launch in a file explorer. It will not launch, it will not open Excel, it will not open Word and so on and so forth. Now let's proceed. Selecting files and folders, you can click first and press enter or you can double click on this. Uh, yeah, okay, you can just read this to select all items within a location, click the home tab and click all click select all in the ribbon or press control A. So let, selecting files and folders, huh? we're talking about selecting. Okay, to select consecutive items, click the first one, press and hold shift. So this is how you select, okay? There are many ways. So he is explaining that, for example, select, okay, click on once. You can either click and then click shift and the arrow down. You can select it. Okay. You can control A, you can select all. Uh, you can also uh, press control and click on one folder and click on another folder or file. Now, once you do that, you can copy and paste. That's the use of that. Selecting only certain, not all. You can also uh, like here I'm clicking we call it lasso okay and clicking and dragging my mouse to a certain area here that I can select only this view okay, I don't want to select here and yeah okay because it might move my files and folders that I cannot see that later on okay as you can see by the way earlier I said uh, you can hide those file name extensions but for me I chose that I want to see the file name extensions. Yeah, I basically discussed this. And then you can copy, cut, and paste files and folders. Shortcuts are here. Renaming files, select the file and just press F2. That's one way. Right click the file or the folder and you can rename. So right click, rename. Okay, you can click, press F2, you can also click, uh, it, you can select and then click on the file name or folder name area just once and you can change it. Okay, be careful not to rename any program files and folders. So program files and folders, what he's talking about is that when on, you're on the OSC, and this is the program files that he's done. Any, any, and any files and folders inside those program files, you cannot change it or you, you should not change it, okay? Because you might have an, a problem on your operating systems when you turn it on later on. I mean, when you boot it. Okay, searching for files, the best, way on how to do this is by the use of our search box. Of course, the Cortana is there if you want to use the accessibility, uh, especially for our disabled brothers and sisters. On Mac, you can spotlight by clicking the spotlight icon or pressing command plus spacebar. I'm not sure if this is still updated, but you can try. Okay, searching within the, the file explorer. So it's either you go here and search for your files and folders or you are inside already. So 
go and do it. Search a desktop, okay? So most likely me, I'm going to my desktop because my personal and professional files and folders are on my desktop, but I was, I'm still trying to organize this like this. Uh, okay, but if you are in a public computer, like when you are using that geotech.lab account, okay, geotech 2020 uh, it's not a good practice to put your uh, files and folders on a desktop, okay? Because it's public. Anybody can see your files and folders. It's not a good practice. Okay, so let's proceed. Looking at the recycle, recycling bin, uh, temporary storage of items that you delete from the local hard disk. If you are deleting, it will go here. Okay, so but to permanently delete, of course, you have to go to your recycle bin and permanently delete. Where's your recycle bin? Right click, empty, empty recycle bin, or go inside the empty recycle bin is also there. Okay, right now I don't have because I'm a trigger happy if I click this and I, what's this? Let me just check if I can delete this. Okay, no, I cannot delete that. Okay, if I press shift and then click my delete key here, shift delete, then it will permanently delete your files. It will not go to your recycle bin. So don't do that or do not practice that. Uh, it's just me. I, 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 if I something to uh, delete, then that's it. Most likely, I'm a uh, trigger happy when it comes to deleting because I don't want uh, I don't want my computer to have a lot of files and folders. I want to conserve my uh, storage. Okay, let's proceed. Scanners. Okay, when you insert a scanner. Okay, it will create a folder for scanned output within the pictures folder. Okay, that's just even your camera. Okay, uh, fax and scan save images to document scan documents folder. Okay, if you have a pictures and for example, you have to use Windows 10 camera app, it will be by default located to pictures folder in the desktop. So in your desktop, you have a picture. No, 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 not in uh, your, where is, yeah, in your profile, okay, you have desktop documents, downloads, and favorites, you have music, OneDrive, uh, where's my picture, what's this? Mm -hmm. Where is my ah okay it's on this PC so when you have okay this okay this PC you will start with your drive C is here okay but you have desktop downloads pictures already directly so you have a scan folder because I have a printer and scanner, it will be uh, automatically saved here and so on and so forth. Video projects, yeah, because of the application POTOS, this one, this application, okay, uh, this is the simplest way to edit videos and, yeah, video using the video editor. Okay, or maybe even the picture because you can rotate only, uh, yeah, from here. When you save automatically the project, okay, not the file, uh, the result, okay, you can change the result, but the project when you, uh, when you uh, create a project on that application, it will save here. Now let's proceed. So the others are Windows print screen. It will be in the print picture screenshots. Okay, do I have a screenshots there? 
I do not have right now. Now, snipping tool on, it will be safe. This is default locations, of course, the one I've shown you before when I use snipping tool. Okay, and then I use, where is it? Yeah, here. New. Okay, and I click this. Okay, file. If I click save as, okay, I can save it to here. Okay, because before the default is there. But I already changed this. So it will not, or, yeah. For example, I did not use save as. If I use control S, okay, uh, my default, no, not my, my, not my default, my, the change, I changed this to, to save, uh, always in our in my desktop okay so that's snipping tool so this slide talks about the default location when you save pictures okay your smartphones uh, when you have a smartphone photos are stored in a picture gallery within the gallery click a picture to view with full screen tap the picture to see share options okay so it will automatically in your uh, gallery Okay, managing electronic media. Electronic media are those um, smart drive, okay, the small one. Uh, electronic digital media is media that is stored and played or viewed electronically using a player or player app. Players and player apps are designed to handle digital content that is protected by DRM software. You cannot directly manage digital media using file store or other computer file manage meant utilities you need a software okay um like for example a camera okay uh if you can you can um you can use file store to access the internal storage okay but the other parts of that if it's not available then you need a software sorry what where was this Okay, that's that's what we have for electronic media. And uh, yeah, the dedicated software that is for that media or for that device, that's what you need to use. Okay, for example, GoPro, it has a software okay, to access the media. Example, your iPhone, it can access your internal storage, but other than that, you also need your iTunes. Like for example, uh, backupping your um what the content and the configuration or the setup of your iphone you need itunes okay to connect to the computer okay sharing files there are many ways on how to share files by the use of the removable media meaning a usb or the one that i showed you the smart disk or drive and then, of course, in a computer, when you log in, there is a public folder. For example, you want another person, when he logged in or she logged into the same computer, you want him or her to see that, you can put your file in a public folder. Okay, so you can create a folder here. Okay, uh, right click, create a folder and put your file, but only in this computer. Okay, then on a network, for example, in the whole Geotech, you can share a folder, but that can be done right now at Geotech. That can be done by uh, the IT department. And I've shown you that. They can either put that in a server or, for example, you want to have your own folder. For example, here, I want to share this. Okay, I want to go to properties and share it. Okay, I can share it, but it must be configured also by the ID department. Okay, I cannot just simply share it. Okay, meaning even if I make it share and I finish that configuration and I gave you the access, you cannot still access my computer. First of all, it has to be open all the time. Second is that the IT department must give uh, the permission to that. Okay, so next, network sharing, I already mentioned that, 
So the other X drive and Y drive. And of course, you can attach through your email. It's either you attach files, okay? But ultimately, you cannot attach a folder. It's not permitted. Okay, the way that we are doing that is to compress the file or make it a zip file. But because the concept of making a compressed file is you're making it look like a file, okay, so that the email software will attach this because it looks like a file. But no, it's just compressed. Okay, everything is inside. It's a folder that just looks like a file. Okay, to the email application. Okay, it, I mean, uh, we said before the operating system knows that files and folders they are having the same, you know, uh, behavior properties and so on. But the email application, they do not treat them different. Same way, files only I can attach, folder I cannot. You have to make it compressed and that's by using the zip. I will come back to that later on. Now, limitations on email attachments, as I mentioned already, many email programs limit the size of file attachment, which is like uh, 20 MB mostly right now. Okay, if it is more than that, you use the cloud, okay? Many providers block certain types of file attachment like exe, exe. Okay, that's a dangerous file if the file extension is exe. So most likely email will uh, check if that's permittable or not because most of the virus, their file name extension is that exe. Okay, now again, you must compress a folder so that you can attach it. Now, that's the easiest because first one, the advantage of this, you're reducing the file size or the folder size because, because you have so many files inside. And second, again, you can attach it only once. You, you will only attach once. Okay, so how do you do that? As simple as if you have a folder here, uh, let's go here, yeah. Right click and then mostly I'm using send to compress zip folder. Do not use this, okay? It will have an error for sure. Just go to send to and compress zip folder. Okay, right now it has created the zip folder. Now, as I should, as I told you earlier, zip, Z-I-P means the email application, Outlook, your Yahoo Mail, Gmail, it will treat now as a file and it can be attached to your email messages. Okay, I'm just going to delete this since I don't want, I don't know. Now to extract this, for example, you receive a file like this, you download it, it's now on your folder or fi uh, file explorer, you double click, it will open, okay? So now, right now, WinRAR, I don't have a license, so I just close that and that's it. Okay, extract to, he will ask for the location, where will you want to uh, zip it? You select whatever folder you have, you can change the name later on and it's up to you. Okay, so for now I'm canceling this and I'm deleting this. Okay, that's how you extract. Okay, so summary, navigate a directory and follow paths. That's what we discussed, understand rights and permissions. Use File Explorer, work with Windows, recognize different types of files, work with files and folders, how to find files. We worked with the recycle bin, how to describe default file locations, how to share pictures on a smartphone, how to manage electronic media, how to share files with other users different uh, sharing technique and then how to zip and unzip okay so this is what we discuss in lesson number four file management uh, thank you very much for watching again um, i will see you in the next lesson bye